Look at this. I got headphones <laughs> on. I got a mic going. <laughs> Baby. Huh? If only people could see you now. <laughs> hey, no video. We've gone through this before. All right, no all video. right, all right. <laughs> Welcome to This Commerce Life. This is a podcast aimed at small, medium entrepreneurs focused on commerce. I'm Phil, your host, and Kenny, your co-host, will join us as well. And we're going to talk to you about the world of retail and commerce and how things are changing in the world. Here, 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 here. I'm here. Just there. There you are. Oh, oh. shit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you click once. Just click once, not 12 times. I, I you know, can't. I was looking at, I'm looking at your hair to see if it's got that funny look to see if that you are in New York or if that's bullshit. It looks like bullshit. bullshit. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. I'm just trying to freak people out that I ended up going to the epicenter for, you know, why not? Epicenter? You just got to stay here. Freaking hell. No, oh, no, no. That's not the <laughs> epicenter. Ass kids no, no. I, I don't see, I don't <laughs> see you on a beach, you know, <laughs> you need to go to the Florida no, I'm brown. And... Brown people don't go to the beach, man. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in the shade. Exactly. It's the rest of us who want to look brown, we go to the beach. Oh, yeah, no. Except me. I, Except me. I actually ended up saying that on breakfast television. No way. That's hilarious. Oh, about Did you can't freak out? No, it was actually, Wendy was fine with it. She, head office okay. was fine with it. Like it was, cause I was doing a sunscreen clinic thing. Okay. And, um, and then the host is actually Indian as well. And he said, oh, I don't tan. I go, no, brown people don't tan. I'm like, we're all about the shade. And anyways. What, what do you yeah. say? And he, he just laughed. And I mean, then he invited He probably me wanted to, to agree and thought, well, I just, I guess I can't go down that path. No, and then, you know, I think everyone's just happy that Pindy doesn't, uh, you know, drop any swear words when she's in a formal setting, so it's all good. If Pindy can control that part of her world, it's a freaking big day. Big it day. Big day. Absolutely. Big yeah. day. Mm -hmm. I, I've just met you, so, like, we've talked once on the phone. I like you already. I told you. Oh, you okay. Yeah. Yeah. The first time I met her, I, I already, I, I had known of her. Yeah. Before I met her. First time I met her, I thought, I like her. Yeah. Yeah, she's nice. She's friendly, bubbly, you know, nice. Yeah, because we, Ken and I knew of each other because, you know, honestly, Ken Venucci was a legend at London. Yeah, Venucci. Yeah, and um, <laughs> we knew of each other. But I think right away when we met, we just hit it off. Like, we, we like the same people. We get annoyed by the same people. So it's it's a common thread. Okay. Okay. I think that's, that's that's fair. I mean, we're from sort of same same sort of upbringings and... Yeah. You know, that, that type of thing. So, yeah, I think I, I had already, I had heard, because I was still buying all the health at LD, right? I was buying all the OTC, all the vitamins. Mm -hmm. I think probably food at that time. And mm -hmm. uh, London was leveraging Pindy a lot to do um, a lot of their uh, PR, like online, not PR. Like Wendy, uh, God bless her, was in charge of PR, yeah. but pick the people that would represent London well, be able to speak, yep. Yep. you know, all those great things, right? Yeah. And, and I'm happy to say, you know, that they never found a replacement for me. So just saying. <laughs> they never did. Now, there's so many things that. you can say with that. You just won't just let it go, right? I love I, that. No, well, I, I have to say that because I actually got to do a, a radio show on the Indian uh, radio station before I left for London Drugs. And that That's was fun. That's cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. 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 I it, like it doing helped. that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it, it it is great to give back, and then my my parents would always get phone calls saying that they heard you know hit their friends from me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. the whole thing in Punjabi, so that was yeah. fun. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. That's mm -hmm. amazing. cool, right? I mean, what the hell? I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Kenny, do you yeah. want to do intros? Uh oh yeah, because we typically mm. do this like we do this. Like we this. roll into but, it and then we forget. And then I, we forget that we yeah, nobody yeah, yeah, knows yeah. who the hell we're talking to. <laughs> So today we're talking to a friend, uh, Pindy Janda. Pindy used to be, um, I'm going to say pharmacist at London Drug because you're a registered pharmacist. I couldn't remember your title at London Drugs. But uh, but before I left, it was pharmacy manager. Pharmacy manager. Okay. So what, when I got to know Pindy, it was because I was doing a lot. I was buying all the health and et cetera. Got yeah. to know the pharmacy side really well, um, obviously. Um, and then one of the shows, that's what happened. I thought, okay, shit, they're Pindy, 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 Pindy. Okay, what's a Pindy? So I go find out what a Pindy is. <laughs> and I got to meet Pindy. And Pindy was, uh, was a huge help to our side, like on the OTC and, and mm -hmm. um, vitamin side, because pharmacists don't typically buy into our side very well. So mm -hmm. 
Pindy was a really good bridge to have on that side because at London Drugs, she was the one. She was the one doing the t- television. She had some radio. Um, mm-hmm. She would do a lot of the internal commercials, all the stuff that would deal with pharmacy. Pindy was a large part of it. So if Global wanted to come in and talk about the latest allergy pills or what's going on, then she'd be sort of the person. So that's how I got to know Pindy. I've known Pindy probably, I don't know, maybe 10, 11 years, maybe 12 years. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Something like that. I don't think it's much longer than that. But uh, that's how we got to know each other. So, and now, I mean, I do, if, if I'm looking for somebody that um, um, I think could um, help represent, especially a natural health product well, mm-hmm. and I know this as long as she buys into it, because I don't, I won't mm-hmm. throw her junk. I yep. know that she'll do it because she hopes her mind is open. It's not, okay, I'm going to pick on you guys, sit pity. Not a typical pharmacist where it's all drug, drug. Like yeah. there are a few that can actually bridge the gap and understand that, you know, there is a benefit to, natural medicines and it's probably because again upbringing and culture uh right. that Absolutely. older cultures because all three of us are from older cultures mine's european asian and and asian is that you know we kind of trust in mother earth too to have a few tricks up her yeah yeah upper sleeve. just doesn't have things. to come from a lab right yeah. not everything comes from a lab so yeah. Pindy was a great bridge for that a really good person to have because she could help bridge between the two worlds so that's mm-hmm. how i got to know Pindy, and that's i don't know we just kind of I don't know. It's kind of always just kind of clicked. Yeah. You can tell why, Phil, right? She's pretty easy to talk to. I mean, yep. Yep. Yeah. Thank yep. you. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's okay. cool. So that's what, a Pindy. So, so, Pindy, what do you do now? So, now I, um, so my day job is I work, I am now the GM of the clinical and specialty division at Imperial Distributors. So, okay. what's Imperial? We are a um, pharmaceutical wholesaler. So, we sell everything that a pharmacy needs. For their patients. Okay. And my particular division is now that we're seeing the shift being made from like old school medications to more specialty or what they call precision medicine. Okay. Um, my role is to basically bridge between the manufacturer and products that they've already launched and invested in education and then bring it to a different market. Okay. Get more pharmacists comfortable. So the more mm-hmm. pharmacists who are comfortable, the more easier access patients will have. Yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, so there's a win, win, win. And then so what's the win for Imperial? Well, we would like them to purchase the product through us. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah. Um, yeah, like when I give the presentation as to what my role is and what the division is. So, you know, of course, the touchy feely part is, oh, we're really helping more patients get drugs. But in the end, we all know, and you know, I always say this, pharmacists have to figure out how to get paid because they don't have billing codes. Right. They don't get paid by the government. They need yeah, to yeah. So they are in this position where they have to take care of patients, but they also need to be viable. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's not um, altruistic. Exactly. No, it's not. And and that's okay because that's yeah. reality. No, no, and no. Yeah, yeah. I, I think absolutely. that's okay. And yeah. I think, you know, you know, going back to what Ken said about being more open-minded as a pharmacist, I'm certainly not taking away from, you know, the scientific clinical based therapies, but there is a place for an adjunct or a supplement right. or what have you. Um, so, and it's about, you know, looking, I know that word holistic gets thrown around a lot, quite a bit, but it, for a pharmacist to really be a part of the patient's entire healthcare team, they need to be looking at them as an entire person. Mm. Mm-hmm. not just one script that they're filling mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right so, yeah that makes yeah. sense right mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense yeah. i think yeah, a lot it's... of times too they have to start thinking at the, what what that script does to a lot of other parts of that individual and Absolutely. are there other things that can help yeah. um either make that drug better work better mm-hmm. or mitigate some of the the back end crap of a lot of these drugs which is exactly. part of the package too i mean it's yeah you know it's yeah. the price you pay for it right Exactly, exactly. And it's, you know, a lot of times like you're weighing the side effects versus the benefits. Like you're weighing, okay, well, is it, is it still a benefit? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Right. Yeah. And for the most part, death or a little inconvenience and inconvenience kind of wins most times. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends on who you are. I mean, it's, it's, that's a, that's a personal choice. Oh, absolutely. Well, when we were in pharmacy school, we had, <laughs> down, the key was just as long as you don't kill the patient, you're good. Yeah, exactly. Don't kill the person. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. There's a little more than that, but thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's kind of funny because like, so I, I had that in my bag. So when Target came to Canada, um, mm-hmm. I, I, had the, I had the OTC buying desk. And so okay. one, of, one of my jobs was to um, 
to help or, or to kind of interface with the franchise because all the pharmacies were franchised. And so right. part of my job was um, to do exactly that was to interface and kind of connect with pharmacists and, you know, and, and it was always the same thing, right? Like as soon as I said I was OTC, they're like, wait, is cough cold in your stuff? And I'm like, yes, it is. But, <laughs> um, and we settled on exactly that was, you know, can we just agree that it's not going to kill you? Will that kind of like help you get out of my way so I can sell some stuff? Like, so Absolutely. Funny. yeah, that was a challenge funny. with it too. Or the first thing, yeah. you do, are you a pharmacist? No. Okay. Right away. Yeah. You've yeah. lost 80% cred. Yeah. And then yeah. as soon as you yeah. say the categories yeah. you're buying, you're pretty much, okay, I guess we'll yeah. have to deal with this guy, yeah. but quite frankly, yeah. we don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're just too, yeah, they're not, they may be scared or they're just not open-minded enough yeah. to, and you know, a lot of them are just get bogged down and they're, they're victims of their own stress, really. Exactly. Yeah. And now yeah. fairness to LD, LD actually yeah. had a pretty solid group of pharmacists for who the most part relative yeah. to a lot of other uh, chains actually were pretty open-minded for the most part. There I were a bunch of dinosaurs for sure, but for the most part, a pretty good group. So we were I, lucky to have a Pindy who was also, again, a pharmacist and could help with the ones that were on the edge. Fair? I think, you know, Ken, we were lucky that we were there at a really good time in the sense that the yeah. mix really, yeah, like everything just jived. Yeah. You know, like the head office mentality, you know, the head office, um, basically their mantra and what they were doing and then the way that it was being translated right to the front line. And it, yeah just all just really clicked together. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a pretty mm -hmm. solid team though. Like, I mean, we, we both know John well, I mean, John picked a really good team for his side. Um, yeah. I think we had a pretty solid team on our side, like on the, you mm -hmm. know, and I, it seemed, and it worked well together. It did. And probably in large part because John and I got along well too, which probably didn't hurt. Thank um, goodness. It's so hard right? to get along with you. Yeah. I know I'm a it's problem tough. child, but eh. <laughs> hey, God. This Every is Phil's week. cross now. Every it week. Be, it used to be Amelia's cross alone. Now it's Phil's. Once a week. <laughs> you know, Amelia doesn't even know film. I think so, Amelia likes so film. So listen, listen, Amelia. I know you, now you listen to podcasts. Uh, not often. So, don't, so, don't get so if you hear this, on the off chance you hear this, I'll do an episode with you and we can cut Kenny out of it. Go ahead. <laughs> Whoa, go ahead. <laughs> go, go for it. it. Go for it. Be that way. <laughs> so, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, you know I love you. Uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, I have questions for Pindy. So, Pindy, sure. um, how do you, what's, is there, so I guess the part that I'm thinking about, because I think, I think that the job is kind of an amazing job, right? Um, the part that I think that really, like, might stick with the guys that listen to us or the, or the folks that listen to us might be about how you go about taking some of that, um, how you look at like models that you have and then how do you find new territory, right? I think, I think that's part of, you know, being a brand, being a retailer is always trying to figure out like, how do I take this thing and sell more of it because I can reach a new market. I can reach a new, do you have, I don't know if there's a process for that or, or just kind of the way you see it differently. Yes. And I think, no, in terms of a process, I wouldn't say it's always the same approach every time, Yeah, but I think I end up wearing multiple hats together when I am working. So, you know, my other identity is that I do work as a consultant um, mm -hmm. with different, uh, not so much consumer packaged goods, but more on just like the supplement side, vitamins, natural health products and such, okay. and then education programs for pharmacists. But when I'm thinking about products, it's about, because a lot of these products may already have a, a, quite a few competitors already in the market. So what you want to look at first is, okay, so what makes this product different or better? Mm -hmm. And we don't want to focus on price because, mm -hmm. you know, as both of you know, focusing on price is just a race to the bottom. I it's knew not I like this lady for yeah. a reason. At a pharmacist, can you imagine talking like yeah. that? Oh my God. <laughs> right? Huh. So thank you. So I think for my, and I do come by it naturally. Ken knows I talk about my dad quite a bit. So my dad is, um, He's a commercial realtor. He's actually okay. one of the first Indo-Canadian in BC. Wow. Okay. In early 70s. So I do okay. come by it naturally because it's always been about, okay, so what are you offering that person that they're missing? And, you know, and we, we've all heard this through sales. Like what problem are you solving for that person? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Right. So yeah. I try to tap into that as in, okay, you chose to be a pharmacist 
or maybe you did it by default because you didn't get into medical and dent, but fine. But um, you want to help people. That is the overall mantra, correct? Mm -hmm. That, oh, correct. I want to help yeah. people. That's why I want to go into healthcare. Okay, so if you want to help them, that means helping them with their problems because they yeah. don't need help with stuff that's going well. So to really get them to think about that. And so when, say, for example, I get, I get introduced a product, you're like, Mindy, what can you, how can we make this stand out in the market compared to what's out there? I'm like, okay, let's break it down to how many times a day do they have to take it? Is it easy to take? Do they have to take it with food? Does it matter? Is it going to interact with a lot or is it, you know, easy peasy? And like Phil, like you said, it's not going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So just kind of, you know, starting off with that. And then a lot of it is, I always think, okay, how can I get this patient, this customer to think about incorporating this product without it being too much of a second, third, fourth thought? Like, it's just easy. It just becomes a part of their routine. Mm, okay. Yeah. So I think that's kind of like my overall view on okay. how I approach like helping um, somebody that I'm consulting with, with their product line. Yeah. I yeah, don't get about, I play the truth. I don't even ask how much stuff costs. That's amazing. Really, really. Well, because, yeah. you know, I've seen from, you know, like when Ken with LD, when we had certain products come in, when they had enough notoriety and that branding was done properly, the price didn't matter. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. Yeah. It, it was, yeah, I know that's going to, like when Google mean hit the market. Yeah. yeah. You know, it didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we yeah, raced to the bottom in the end, but we started at a nice it level. It was at the, at the end, yeah. but then you had somebody like, you know, there was that other product. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention names, but you Doesn't know, the one, okay. Like the Sierra sale, yeah. you know, the way that was branded and just like locally, how, you know, having yeah. the radio person speak to it and such. Yeah. And then you had people come in and ask for it. And then the irony was, Ken, that the bottle doesn't say it on there until small print at the bottom. Yeah. The bottle said this other joint something on it. No one could ever find it. Right. <laughs> right. I, 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 I distinctly remember that. We're like, what is this product? But yeah, so that's kind of, you know, getting, Phil, okay. getting back to the question. That's kind of yeah. where, that's where yeah. I go. I'm, and I've been fortunate with where my career path has taken me that I've been able to utilize a lot of like natural things to my personality and just kind of getting in that business development side, as mm -hmm. well as being a pharmacist and caring about patients. So um, not to toot my own horn, but I, I do understand that it is a unique perspective that I can bring. And I think the people I've worked with understand that and appreciate it. I don't think that's tooting. I, I really think that at this point, it's, it's really, people need that, right? And sometimes it's just about like, look, this is what I can. I, I don't know. I feel like Kenny and I trip over the same things. It's neither, uh, neither one of us likes to say what we're good at, but a lot of times that's what it is, right? Is, is look like, here's the, here's the view that I possess that you yes. can't see, right? That I, I can totally help you with, right? Like that's what I'm here to do. Right. So I, which is I why think I think really cool. we called her on is that, yeah. I, I think that, I yeah. think the challenge that the industry has in a lot of ways is that the, all the guys on the natural side for call for lack of a better or non, mm -hmm. um, non drug side, Mm -hmm. have their walls up saying that, well, our product's better than drug because it's natural and it doesn't do anything. And they get in that mindset. And then you got the other side, which comes and says, well, I, we don't know shit about that product. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. not going to kill you, but that's not yeah. a ringing endorsement. Yeah, yeah. And we know what our stuff does and we know what it causes and doesn't <clears> cause. <throat> yeah. And it's trying to find someone in the middle that says, listen, guys, you're, you're both right. Like you got to just learn how to play together because yeah. there's a lot of times the natural could be the, the primary therapy and the pharmacy is the adjunct. You got I it. mean, a lot of times it's really the opposite. I get that. It's, it's, yeah. the, it's yeah. really the drug you need because it's, it's, it, you're going to be in a big, big problem. I mean, Steve Jobs, classic example, that if he had done things maybe a little differently and used natural more as an adjunct, he might still be here. Possibly. I mean, because awesome. you, you right. go down funny paths, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And you got to realize yeah. that there's a, there is a role for both, right? Mother Nature yeah, did her gonna be thing, a balance. And, yeah. but science is allowed yeah. to do theirs. Yeah. Well, exactly. And, you know, and taking it like, you know, this one step from that is just looking at, you know, the person's lifestyle and then just nutrition and proper yeah, but what pharmacist does that. Come on. Penny, exactly. No, that, you know, Ken, you're totally right. They don't. So you'll have, you know, like, look at the, the incidence <clears throat> of, of type two diabetes, which yeah. you know, many experts or like, you know, naturopath doctors will say, well, it's a lifestyle disease. Like if you can change your lifestyle. Yeah. 
and you're doing all of this, then maybe you don't need to be on five meds and this right. and that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. certainly not discounting it, obviously. I mean, if someone needs it, they need it. But yeah. to really think about well, what else could I be doing or should I be doing on the natural side? So yes, natural supplements and products, but it's also, you know, one back is just, well, are you eating properly? Are you eating well? Are you doing a little bit of exercise? Because at the end of the day, you still may need the meds. Yeah. Maybe you just need less of them. Yeah. And that's okay too. Yeah. And you have to, I mean, it's funny, like, you know, like um, with my brother, I, I, I've never seen the guy eat a fruit or vegetable in my life. He's 43 now. But ever since there was that product that came out that all greens or whatever it was, and then he yeah. started, so when he got married 14 years ago, my sister-in-law, God bless her, started making him these shakes. Yeah. And it's like, well, he knew he had to eat properly, but he won't. But now he had something that was helping yeah. him. Right. It made sense. That makes sense. You know? Makes yeah. sense. trying to find that bridge, I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, finding the bridge, you know, and going to what Ken said, like I won't um I will I won't work with something unless I do believe in it. Okay. I won't. And he knows that about me. That yeah. that's just like my own personal thing. I just won't uh, sell my soul per se. But I just, you know, um, and I like being that person that my friends and family will reach out to to ask my opinion about something. Yeah. About a vitamin. I mean, I get text messages all the time, like random stuff. Like what's the dose of Tylenol again for my kid or just things like that. Or do you think this is legit or not? Right. You know? So I have, I yeah. have a friend that I work with at Target. She's <laughs> in Chicago now. And uh, I, I was looking at the texts with her the other day and all of them are um, interaction questions. Uh, you know, like I think one of them is like, I took, I, I, I'm going to give them Tylenol. Can I also give them Roboxoset or can I give them, does this work with this? Does it, you know, so like <laughs> I realize that I've got a friend and that's all I do. That's all we do is like, I go this and this, will it kill you? No, but you should probably take that instead. Don't take that. Yeah. Don't take those together. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's okay. Amazing. Yeah. 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 You know, amazing. like at least you guys aren't trying to sell each other Bitcoin or something. So that's yeah, okay. Yeah. It's exactly. <laughs> right, right? It's, exactly. it's true. It's true. Yeah. 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 So um, you get a lot of, sorry, Phil, no, you get a lot ahead. of natural companies that do approach you now, whether they come through people like me or Phil or others. What, yes. what, what is it? What is one of the first things you are trying to get out of them outside of, I know you're trying to fill a customer need, but what advice are you giving them to, to approach pharmacy? I honestly, cause pharmacist is a tough gig. It really is. Especially if you're coming from a non-pharmacy side. Yeah. So in terms of approaching pharmacy, I, I always say, I'm like, you need to have, even though, cause it costs a lot of money to do your own clinical trials. Of course we know that, but yeah. if you can do some clinical med, you know, medline research that you have that to back up what you're saying and you don't sound like you're trying to sell them a vacuum. Right. Okay. Cause yeah. that will actually show them that, Oh, this person was, they actually are listening or they're talking to me in my language. Like they, they went, they did the effort. They went and found like a study that was showing such and such was used in this. Yeah. Right. It yeah. may not be applicable to every single product, but I think when it comes down to, you know, knowing your audience and like Ken said, the way pharmacists are just knowing what they're used to hearing. Cause a lot of them will just come back. Like, I, you know, I remember when I was working at LD and you would see a rep come in and you know, I'm not going to give them a hard time. Like they're talking to me about a product and this and that when they were respectful and they said, actually, yeah, I don't really know too much about this, but here you go. And then you had someone come in who just, you know, they just kept sh um, doing their spiel, but it just like was snake so oil. It, yeah. It was just snake oil and it just yeah. didn't, it just didn't jive. So yeah. um, I think it's the authenticity in when you're giving the message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you can bring in some sort of, okay, you know what, we had done some research, it wasn't our own study, but it's applicable to this product yeah, yeah. or this yeah. family of medicine. Yeah. I think that actually does open their ears up and they're like, oh, they're actually thinking about us. Can we, um, so what I love about this as well is I think um, one of the things that you can help decode is a lot of brands, uh, particularly ones that listen to us, struggle with working with a, a spokesperson or someone, mm -hmm. uh, an influencer, right? Essentially is what you are, right? Um, you're out there, you're connecting. I've worked with my daughter. Or, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And so like, I guess um, to kind of help them like from a, like, so let's say you're meeting a customer for the first time. 
yep. he says, Hey, I, you know, Pindy, I heard a lot about you. Kenny referred you. I'd like mm -hmm. to talk to you about doing product. Um, what, what do you do to get ready for meeting? What kinds of questions do you have for the company? And then what kinds of things do you expect to get back as questions that, do you know what I mean? Like, cause a lot yeah. of people go, Oh, that person's cool. We should work with them. And I'm always like, did you, did you ask them anything? Did yeah, you do the homework? Like, both they ways. Know, did they just sign an autograph? Is that what's cool about that? Like, what, what is it? You know, like, well, I think yeah, that would they, be, yeah. like, did they even ask you anything? Right. 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 Yeah. So, yeah. um, you know, so a good example would be a customer, uh, someone I'm working with right now. And so right off the bat, I was, you know, they wanted, we, we were working on a supplement line and I asked them for, okay, so please tell me what you have right now. Like, show me your baseline you know, do you have a sell sheet? Is there a yeah. presentation? What has been done already? Yeah. And then we really discuss about, okay, well, where are you seeing the pitfalls? Like, what do you really need help with? Like, yeah. you don't need someone to just say, oh, hi, here's this product. Yeah. That's not what you need. Yeah. So that's been, that's always been my approach is to see where they're at now. And so <clears> depending <throat> on, because I know, you know, from my, from like, you know, that everything has to have like the health Canada approval as well. Right. Yep. So, it really speaks to me when right away I will get that Health Canada monograph from them for their product when they send me the info. I'm like, okay. Okay. right? Like that's great to see that or they yeah. reference it. So say for example, they come out with something and their dose is like 80 milligrams, but the Health Canada guideline is like, okay, 50 to 150. So they're, they're, they're already mindful of that, that that's, yeah. what, the, that's what Health Canada is recommending. Yeah. Okay. So, you actually, so my advice would be to a company that is looking for someone to be a spokesperson is not just about who that person is and maybe quote unquote, how many followers and such yep. they have, yeah, yeah. but really in terms of, well, what is their reach in terms of what is that? Who's the person who's actually going to be buying your stuff yeah. and then selling it? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. You know, that's how I would look at it. And yeah, uh, yeah. I, it's, I, I find this whole world quite fascinating. This, you know, this whole influencer thing. And, you know, my daughter is 17 and she's been telling mom, this person on Instagram or whatever, and they have all these followers and she puts ads for clothing. I'm like, really, does that really matter that much? Because now I don't know that industry yeah. is completely different yeah. apparel and what have you, but, um, it's, it's a little crazy. I, I it's actually really timely. So, um, uh, this week I had a conversation with a company that I, I met on Instagram. They found mm -hmm. me, followed me, um, and, and came after me for me to do some influencer work for them. And I, I was just curious, right? Because I, I'd actually never been approached that way before. And it was for a golf, like an up and coming golf brand. But we had this conversation because they said, oh, we'd love to have you as an influencer. And I messaged them back and said, I don't really think that I'm, we, I'm happy to have the discussion with you. Love golf. But, you know, I golf maybe once every two weeks. I'm, I'm not really, I'm not out there all the time. You know, like I, I get if you want an ordinary Joe or a less than ordinary Joe on the right. golf course, maybe I'm your guy. But, and so we had this whole conversation and it turned out that they really don't, they don't even know what they're looking for, right? So, which is why having you on, like I wound up getting them into a place where they're now thinking about bringing me on to help them figure out who they need who they yeah, need to uh, find the influencer. Yeah. <laughs> <Do you know? laughs> well, obviously not Phil. Let's find one. It's not me. Like I, I was like, I look, this is really cool. Like if you're going to send me free shit, not like you. I'm, I'm, you know, I'd love it, but I, I think I'm not going to get you anything that you want. Plus you're not asking me for anything. I feel like this is. So why do they you know, pick you though? I'm trying to understand their thought process. I don't know either. So, so I asked them, they said, well, you have, so the only cognizant answer I could get out of them is mm. that they said, oh, you have like, you have cool posts. And I was like, yes. Mm. And then the, you know, like, you know, I, I think I'm like Kenny, I love photography. So I'll pick, you know, artistic angles and things like that. So I think some of my golf shots are really nice golf shots. But okay. I said to them, like, you got to notice, like I go to Florida once a year, right around Global Pet. So the, that's where my Florida, like amazing funky golf pictures are from. And then right. the rest of them are, you know, kind of like, because I've placed a very terrible shot on the golf course. So I'm somewhere weird, but you know, so we, we had this whole conversation. And so that, as you were talking, that was the thing that came to mind is, right. you know, you've got brands who go, Oh, well, she seems like great, but it's almost like, how do you, 
you know, brands need to like stop and think about exactly what you're talking about is just, do they fit your target market? Like who are you after? Right. Exactly. Um, do yeah. they fit? And then I think the other parts of that are like, do you have any experience talking, you know, so in your case, it'd be like, do you have any experience talking to other pharmacists? And you'd be like, hell yeah, you know, like I'm one of them. And, you know, like, so right. I feel like those conversations need to happen before people. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I think those conversations do need to be had. Yeah. And also, you know, just in terms of, so say they wanted the influencer to even assist them with presentations to vendors, yeah. or potential vendors or what have yeah. you. It needs to be somebody you know, during that presentation, it can't be someone who's just as relaxed and casual as, you know, as that person is on Instagram showing yeah. some coffee or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Like they need to have that proper demeanor and be for, yeah. you know. Be skilled at it. Yeah. <laughs> and they have to be polished. Yeah. It really depends on, so if you're going, if they're going to be investing in someone to be an influencer or to help extend their brand, it has to be someone they can count on too. Right. And it, it, someone that brings something to them. Yeah, I agree. As right. well, it adds to them so that, you know, they are confident that this person knows my product and they're going to be professional about it. Right. You know, as opposed to just saying, yeah, you know, yeah, I represent this brand because so-and-so gave me like whatever money to just say it. Like yeah. that's how we yeah. get when they're very nonchalant about it. And yeah. you know, it's very rare, Phil. Like it was good. It's almost like you had somebody it's almost like when someone's interested in you and you're like, you know, it's not you, it's me, but I know someone else who would be a perfect fit. Yeah, Let yeah. me, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. but it takes a lot, you know, and even just saying on the business side, if I was approached by someone where they said, okay, you know, Pindy, this, this, and I'm like, actually, you know what? I think someone else would be a better fit for that. You know, a good example of that right now is, um, so I used to, I used to do a lot of talks for different diabetes vendors. Okay. So I'm kind of considered Switzerland in the pharmacy world because I don't work for a drugstore anymore. I right. work for a wholesaler. Yeah. So it was, you know, it was totally kosher for me to get yeah. that talk. But now, you know, I had a vendor reach out to me during my day job and they're like, you know, Pindy, can you just give the talk for us? Like we, we want to do a WebEx. And I go, actually now with this new role, not really appropriate. I can't, you know, and I said, but I have a few names I think would be perfect for you, depending right, right. on the audience. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. right? So, it. yeah. Got so it. I think that would, it's really important that, you know, if it's almost like that power uh, dynamic where if the brand, if the vendor is going to an influencer saying, we'd really like to have you on board, but they should be also really sure and confident of themselves as to what their needs are. Yeah. You know, they shouldn't yeah. be afraid to have their, what they need done. Yeah. And maybe that takes a lot of, you know, self-reflection and just looking back and saying, okay, what hasn't been working? Who, where are we fall, you know, where are the gaps? And then answering that. Yeah. So, so that kind of is my next question too, because I think um, one of the things that I, I think a good influencer also brings, you know, some augmentation to the plan, right? Like, you know, marketers always have a plan, but it's almost like, because you know, the audience, you've got the expertise. Sometimes you bring things where you go, listen, like, I know you're asking for this one thing, but, you know, a couple of blog articles from me might, you know, well-placed blog articles from me might help mm -hmm. augment, you know, the path to purchase that you're trying to do or things like that. Do you, right. do you get into, do you find yourself in those spots at all? Um, I haven't done like a blog article per se yeah. in a long time. Okay. I, yeah, yeah. I, have done, I had done some magazine contributions and such when I was yeah. a or, or um, some sort of, do you know what I mean? Like some sort of. Oh, absolutely. Like, well, yeah. now it's where this one customer has asked me to do uh, like the presentation online with him. That's going mm -hmm. to be presented to two sales reps okay. for their product line. Okay. And then, and then that was a separate presentation, but then uh, I actually ended up bringing a whole new angle to how the presentation should go. I go, it will be dry if it's nice. just, here's the product. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Give them give them their elevator spiel, give the rep what they need. Cause we know reps don't want to spend a lot of time. Yeah. They just want to know the quick and easy. What am I going to say? Yeah. How am I going to get the sale and get my commission? Yeah. Shortest so, path to purchase. Right. Yeah. So yeah. In this particular case, my audience wasn't necessarily the end user customer of the product. My audience is the reps that they're, they're actually showing this presentation to. Okay. And how they're going to talk to the customers they're selling to. Right. 
Right, right. Yeah. But did yeah. you help them get down that path or did they come yes. to you with that path? Because that's no, the problem I think where Phil's getting at. Most times no, they I reach think... out to who? Like why are they bugging you? Yeah, no, no, no. I no thanks, Ken. No, it will actually I helped them with that. Because right. like say I'm like, you know what? I go, who are your I go, who are these reps and who do they call on? Like who are they calling on? Oh, well, right now it's, it's a health food store. So I'm like, oh, okay. Well, we want them to start calling on pharmacies. I go, well, if you want them to start calling on pharmacies, here's what you're going to have to say. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, that's so great. That, so that's where yeah. we went. And then, so with that, you know, as I had mentioned earlier about the health Canada, mm -hmm. I, I brought that into the presentation because their, yeah. their, their doses were totally safe within range approved by health Canada, but it's still nice to give <clears> that background to, you know, when you're talking to a pharmacist, right? Like for example, if you have a product that comes as a two milligram, but mm -hmm. you can take up to 10 to make it as a safe dose, you're like, actually, you, well, you have more flexibility. You can start, you know, cause the, the um, saying is always start low and go slow. Right, right, right. right. For, right. Dosing of, for, for dosing of products. So the two milligram was probably going to sell the most cause you can start low, but you can yeah. go all the way up to five if you had yeah. to. Right. That yeah. product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. I, I th hopefully the audience um, finds this helpful because I, I think that's a, a big part of this, right? Like to me, these tips you've left are, are like, they're big things, right? Like brands, you know, th these are things that nobody knows to ask, right? This is a, you know, right. you know, they, they don't know what they're looking for. So they almost, I, I don't know. It's, it's a little scary how, um, how brands have picked people. <laughs> I think that's, that, I think that's no. what it is, Phil. I think yeah. it, it's, it's more, it's more of why did you reach out to Phil? Why did you reach out to Pendy? Yeah. If, yeah. if you know, if you're a photographer, a company and you reach out to Phil cause you like his photography, it makes more sense than reaching out to Phil as a golfer when Phil barely golfs. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. so did you spend any time yeah. before you contacted the person? Yeah. Like why the person like, you know, it, what we, you know, opinion and I've been talking about, well, with you as well, about a, 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 something I'd like her to look at, but there's specific reasons for it. Mm -hmm. She's the right gender. Yep. She's yep. the right age. Yep. Um, she's completely the demographic. It's yeah. the, it's the person. Yep. It makes sense. And it's a product that needs pharmacy. It needs um, a, a clinical aspect to it. So you start looking and say, okay, now Penny could always say, listen, I'm not interested and here's the reasons why, but this is someone, but at least you're starting in the right place. Yep. You know, you don't want to go to a swimmer and ask him if, you know, can you pitch a golf ball for me? Right. I mean, what the hell is a swimming and golf ball? You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, yeah. there's no logic yeah, yeah. to it. Like, agree. 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 Well, you're absolutely think, right. and, for you our know, small companies, take the time. Yeah. Look at the person. Yeah. Why is this person? Why am I phoning or reaching out to this person? What is it? If yes. you can't answer, that's probably not the right person. Correct. Absolutely. Like, you know, still reach out because you'll talk to people, so that's fine. Maybe yeah. you can help, but the bottom line is take the 10 minutes, hour, mm -hmm. whatever it takes. Do, do a right. little due diligence. Yeah, yeah do some homework. Do some homework and, you know, just be open-minded to <laughs> suggestions that that person may have. Um, and, but like you said, the background homework is who is your target? Who do you right. want to get this message to? And why is this person going to help you yeah. do that? You know, this one, um, so another project I had done with this, with a vendor was around um, a particular niche type of supplement. And what I had suggested was, and very much kind of, you know, from my upbringing at London Drugs, which is, it doesn't need to be only, you know, merchandised in one section. Actually, the person who needs this product is going to be over in this section too, because they need this other stuff. So you shouldn't, and they may be in this third section as well. So I had brought that um, as a suggestion to this vendor for their product, because I actually mm -hmm. saw it being necessary in multiple different places for merchandising. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I had uh, learned from Ken thing almost like osmosis that so when we were at LD, like Ken would have stuff where it's like, yeah, I would be in the usual section like say, I don't know, like some well, I, we had in both, hack, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or skincare. And then yeah. or a, a, a good example would be actually like these oral vitamins for um, eye health. Right. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Great. Go put it on the wall with all the vitamins. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Actually. And I believe it was Ken who said this, yeah. well, why aren't we also putting this with the eye drops? Cause they're eye drops. We were the yeah. first retailer to list them in eye. We actually, when they first came out, we didn't put them in vitamins. I purposely put them in eye because that's where you guys 
we're going. Because I is a highly, a highly, uh, highly interactive customer pharmacist. Yep. Yeah, because yeah. you put shit in your eyes, right? You know, yeah, people yeah, freak yeah. out on eyes, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. So it just made more sense where there was better odds of getting interaction than the vitamin set where I know you guys didn't go, unless oh, you were grabbing calcium or D or C, because you know, heaven forbid anybody should read anything past a letter. You know, <laughs> no, it's true. I got to pick up. Hey, listen, I had to deal with these people, Phil. God, you know, I I love her, thank God, but seriously. <laughs> oh no! God. Listen, like I'm, I'm right the water. Like, my Jesus I, Christ, I'm, people! I'm right with you. I, I like Told me nuts. Oh my gosh! Like so yeah. terrible. You know, and then even <laughs> I think just in terms of um, describe, like, say of how a product would get listed with a wholesaler. I've given suggestions on maybe you know what that description should look like for the listing information. Yeah. Like yes. just think in terms Fantastic. of what does the pharmacist search for when the pharmacist goes on the wholesaler website? Like how, what are they searching for? Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah you know, yeah. So that, or that. How, how do you keep it front of mind? So it comes up maybe really quickly in your search. Yeah. 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 Right. Love it. I love yeah. It. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. It goes totally back agree. to that whole Sierra Sil joint formula nonsense. So everyone yeah. was calling it Sierra Sil, but when you actually went to look for it, it was joint formula. So tell right. me how you're going to find it to bring it in. You're not. And then you're just going to give up and say, sorry, yeah, we can't get it. Yeah, and then right. They, and then yeah, so yeah. you say, oh, patient never comes back and yeah, lost opportunity. So even like things like that, actually, because I've been now in wholesale for about three and a half years. So just okay. things like that have definitely helped as well, just in terms of bringing that perspective to it. Okay. okay. Yeah. I like mm-hmm. it. But I think that's why people need to start leveraging. It doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be specifically you, but yeah. we do have a lot of people who have natural health products who listen to us. We also have a lot of food guys that listen to us. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. even at London, do you remember, we started pushing food pretty hard yes. into the pharmacy conferences as well. Why? Food is holistic. You, you, you eat. Mm-hmm. A lot of your problems are going to come from food and a lot of your yeah. benefits are yeah. going to come from food. You know, sure. Leverage the pharmacy to help with that as well. That's very right? interesting. So I always tell people, get to know your, get to know a couple of pharmacists in your, in your neighborhood, even, I mean, yeah. it, it, try to find the ones that know that there is outside of the dispensary wall, that there is a world, right? Yeah. Yep. Find that one first. And then that's, that's, those are the ones I'd start to leverage provided you like what they're saying and, yep. and you get it right. But yeah. it's, it's a tough, it's a tough bridge pin. You know, there's not a lot. It's, and, and, no, you know, I mean, it's kudos to you. There's not a lot like you. There are people like you. There's yep. not a lot. Not a lot. A lot of pharmacists do get stuck in true, true um, narcotics and true drug. Yeah. And, you know, it's always, I won't kill you. We get that. Lots of stuff won't kill us. Doesn't it's mean we should take it not or amazing, not take yeah. it. That's yeah. not the endorsement yeah. I'm looking for. Yeah. Like, help me understand why you would mentally go through this and recommend it to your mom or dad. Exactly. And I'm sure that with that one would be that, you know, the, it won't kill you is not the cell you would do with your folks. No. You would have done a little more research. So help me. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. So help me with that. And you know, you know, speaking to that, like a vendor may want in terms of what they're going after, like there may be a pharmacist who's just really like an owner, independent pharmacy, really, really worried about their margins and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then that could be also somebody as an endorser of your product that, you know, you did like a one-off pilot, they were carrying your product, you know, it was given the person great margins. So he loves it. Right. It happens to, it's fine. It's good. It does a great job. But on that, speaking to that part of the pharmacist mindset in the sense when they if have, if you have one of those, off, again, that's a, yeah. a rare breed. Yeah, yeah. That's a rare it breed. Is. I mean, it's yeah. interesting because BC has probably in Western Canada, for sure. We have the most number of independent owner operator pharmacies. Right. Like total wild, wild west. I know that. Well, look at, look at a lot of our buddies. Yeah. Right. We can say brown boys because that's what they call themselves that. But a lot of the brown boys would be doing. That's yeah. what they would do. But those guys do know their businesses. Again, a lot of pharmacists don't. They own yeah. the, the shop because legally you have to be the pharmacist to own it. But right. they have front shop people. So they don't connect yeah. the dollars no, and the and cents think- or the whole thing. They don't get that. Yeah. The front yeah. shop can provide a lot of benefit to your customer, yes. not just to your bottom line, but your customer's bottom line in terms of health. Having uh, the right food, the right OTC, yep. the right drugs, yep. 100%. Yep. Yep. It's all yep. a package. Yep. Help me. Yeah. Cholesterol. Give me the Lipitor. Tell me to eat oats. Why? Go read. Well, and you know, Ken, I'm glad you bring that up because, you know, so somebody who say is fortunate enough to have a front shop manager or a buyer and so they can, you know, focus on their pharmacy stuff. Mm-hmm. But 
the pharmacist has a responsibility and vice versa to actually know what's happening in the front shop for exactly that, that message that you brought up or that example. Yes. Like with like, okay, someone's on a statin, which is pretty much every other person. Yeah. So uh, what are you doing about that? Or now we're hearing so much about, you know, people are really limiting the amount of gluten they're consuming, even if they don't have an official right. gluten intolerance. So as the pharmacist, if you're providing complete care, your pharmacy is carrying that stuff in the front. So you should know about it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's just and good so, business. First and foremost, and forget it. Remember, we're all here to make money. It's good business, it, yeah. exactly. but it's just the right thing to do. Absolutely. And it's also not to take away from a front shop manager, but pers- that, that individual may not have that extended thinking. It's adjunct therapy. Front. It's the same right? thing. Exactly. But they may not know. So you want to make sure that exactly. and that person you've put in charge of your front shop, you guys are having those conversations. I you think know? I told your, the pharmacist the other time, I said, use me as your adjunct therapy. <laughs> That's what I should be. I said, I'm trying to help your drugs do better for your people. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Right. That w- work together. I said, get away yeah. from the molecule, look at it from a greater distance. They come in, they buy the drugs. What are those drugs going to do to them? It's going to deplete this, this, and this. You don't yeah. like vitamins. I don't care. What's the food substitute? Yeah. 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 Even if we don't care, they need to eat more broccoli. Yeah. They need calcium or B yeah. and they don't, you don't believe in pills. I don't care. Don't believe in pills. Tell me what else, what should I eat? Give yeah. me something, mm-hmm. right? Like help me out. Yep. Exactly. I love it. I love it. She's a bit uh, of an anomaly though, right? So, I mean, it's no, <laughs> yeah. honestly, yeah, it's yeah. not, I mean, yeah. I know you don't like to hear that, but it's true. There's not, there, I mean, we, oh, we I love to know, hear it because there's only you, one you, Pinderella. So I love <laughs> that. Well, there's definitely one Pinderella. <laughs> yes. I, I love yes. it. Yeah. Ken knows that. Yes. That's, oh, that's a definitive. But so, I think, um, you know, speaking to what Ken's saying about being an anomaly is I think, I've always, you know, I still get excited if I, if I see an eye drop labeled straight, a prescription eye drop, like I'm still at my core. I'm still like a nerdy pharmacist. Right. right. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's awesome. Um, yeah. I think that I always remember that, that, you know, it, like, it just the way that my life path went, I, I ended up in exactly the right place I should have gone to. I always thought I was going to end up being a physician, but I think this really ended up being the right path for me. Sure. I think you would have been a good physician, but I think you're better this way because you reach more people. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, Unless you're going to be like a Sanjay Gupta or something like that who's on television and you were going to be that person, but no, yeah. you're better off where you are. I, I agree. And I'm, and you know, that, that's the part I still miss the most about being a dispensing pharmacist is that interaction with people right. and really, you know, I know it sounds corny, but honestly making a difference. Yeah. 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 You know, um, yeah, and then now I get and the you know the other the other perspective that I've been able to bring to with my um, with the different vendors I work with is also with my involvement with UBC and just seeing where the education's going at all the universities for pharmacy right now as well. Right. right. Yeah. And you know, in our world, it may not be good news to us because it's very much more clinically based. Like they're almost training them all to be hospital pharmacists. Right. And I'm not seeing that retail knowledge, the community pharmacist, like that's a shame. And it's a real shame. And uh, so it's quite a bit of an eye opener. So when, so you have to actually interview to do this position, even though it's basically volunteer. So I'm now I'm going on to my third year. And um, so the individual who brought me on and you know, Kenny, it's Anil's uh, first cousin. What a small world. I I didn't even find that out till years later. I just thought this guy was just so smart. And um, he said, no, he goes, we actually wanted someone with a lot of experience on the community side because these kids need to hear it. But it's lacking. But, but think about even for doctors, where, where do you find a good GP these days? They don't produce oh. them anymore. And it's no. sad because you know what? You need generalists too. You do. Specialists Absolutely. are awesome, but you can't talk to a specialist. And sometimes yeah. what you have to do is have seven of them in the room, which is not going to happen to get one sort of cohesive generalist answer like you need you need someone who can do a bit yeah. of both and it's a dying breed pharmacy it's, it's gonna be a problem with pharmacy too specialized doctors too specialized yeah you need a couple you know and guys who can do a little wrong. bit of everything girls can do a little bit of everything yes and there's nothing wrong with that no i don't think i think it's, it's critical yeah. mm-hmm. absolutely all right so, so pindy yeah, let's go save the world if uh if if people want to find you where do they find you 
Um, I say the best way to find me is probably through my consulting website. Okay. Um, so my email, I can share it with you, Phil, but it's yeah. just Pindy, P-I-N-D-Y. Um, and then it's at, so the consulting company name is Senseo. So Senseo is the Latin word for solve a problem. Okay. okay. So that's where I came up with the name. So it's okay. C-E-N-S-E-O, P-H-A-R-M.com. Okay. We'll, yeah. we'll leave the link in the show notes as well. So if you guys uh, want to reach Pindy, that's the, that's the best way to reach her. Yes. Um, thank you for coming on. This was amazing. Yeah, I think this was very good. I think it's very informative. And I, yeah. think, I think it's in the world of today yeah. where there's so much shit out there and people are scared shitless of a lot of things. Yeah. It's good to know. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Just wasting yeah, information out. I'm happy to help. And I think it's, you know, it's important for vendors to partner with people who aren't going to just be gouging them for like an hourly. Yeah. Like it has right. to be someone who brings them value. Yeah. And all of us now have had a reset because of COVID. To yeah. just much more mindful about where we spend our time and how and where we spend right. our yeah. fun. Agree. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. Totally yeah. agree. It's fantastic. Pindy, thank you for joining us. Cinderella, thank you. Thank, so you. thank you. It's been fantastic. Sounds good. We'll talk to you later. All right. Take okay. care. Thanks. Thanks. Ciao. Bye. 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 Okay, Phil. Well, hey, man. There's Pinderella. That was good. Pinderella. She's, I love it. she's good. You know what? She's a great bridge. Cause honestly yeah. it's, it's not, I, 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 I seriously believe it. I mean, that's why I get really worried when I, when I know that I'm thinking like, I love my GP, right. He's yep. uh, more or less my age, but I'm all I keep thinking is, Oh fuck one day he's going to go like retire. Oh, then what are you going to do? Like there's no, there's nobody left. There's no generalist left. There's nobody no. you can just go to and have a, a discussion and then nope. feed you to a, 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 a specialist. Right. Yeah. And, yeah, since, yeah, yeah. And, and Pindy can be a specialist. There's no doubt. Yep. But she's smart enough to see a great, she's a, she's pretty, and yeah. large part, she's a very unique pharmacist. There are really, I mean, I don't, you know, she's off the show, so she's not, there's not yeah. a lot like her. There really I, is I know. I, you know what, of all the, so of the, I don't know. I lost count. So whatever the 80 or 90 uh, target pharmacists and then the, the shoppers ones that I've dealt with and the, you know, all of those guys, yeah. I maybe know two that yeah. sort of like sit in Pindy's realm, but not quite Pindy. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, I totally yeah, get yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I totally yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I totally and get it, it. And it's a yeah. skill set to be able to bridge um, from, uh, from profession to customer yeah. to brand and try to get all three speak in a language that all yeah. three need to speak. So they yeah. understand each other. Yeah. 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 Right. And it's, and it's, it's definitely a skill set, and it's, and it's one that's uh, really lacking. Yeah. Really lacking. Yeah. 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 And I do yeah. think, I think if we have brands listening and whether you're a food brand or an OTC or a supplement brand, yeah. I'm seriously, I, th I've, if my advice to you is I would latch on to a pharmacist, find one in your community that, that gets, the business aspect understands the drug side, but yep. also understands there's a holistic, like get that person, yep. not yep. easy to find, no yep. doubt, but they're out there. Yeah. And I think those are great people to have on your teams, even yeah. as a consultative level, yeah. um, run ideas by them because yeah. it's really difficult. I mean, you had the same problem I did. The first thing you do is you go to them. They go, ah, who are you? Well, I'm the OTC buyer. You're not a pharmacist, are you? No, no. Mm. You think I'm no. fuck. I've just dug a ditch. Now I, I, I can't get out of that ditch because I'm not a pharmacist. I may know what I'm doing, you know, and I may uh, look and say, listen, there's a business behind this too. Right. Remember that? Like that's how we all get paid. Like, so I'm, I'm and I'm not bringing you, you know, hocus pocus. Yeah. I'm trying to bring you a legit product yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. is really yeah. adjunctive to, to the stuff you're prescribing. Yeah. Or the prescriptions you're filling. Pardon me. I, I think I, I used to have to answer like, you know, like I used to have to answer all those questions. I like, yes, I read all the Health Canada stuff. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, but that's also, that was you know, done know, because, you know, that, you know to prove like, a point. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I mean? yeah. You know yeah, like it's all guys. these hoops, right? That you're just like, come on, you know, come like. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Just learn together, man. This yeah. is up for your customer. Yeah. This is so that yeah. you do what you're supposed to do, which is have that person leave in a better state when then they came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Right. And that Agreed. might mean a, a bowl of cereal on the way out or show them yeah, how to make oats yeah. and how yeah, that is which good is for really lowering good. cholesterol or whatever yeah. it is. Right. Yeah. That's I what think, we tried to do at London at the time. We brought yeah. so many of those vendors in for those yeah. reasons. And I, I think if you're the, you know, the level above this, if you're not looking for a pharmacist, you, you're not in these and you're still listening is, is just like her breakdown of how she interacts with customers 
is the interaction that you want, right? Like this, this is the interaction that anytime you're, you're touching an influencer an influencer is able to bring you some of the, you know, cause she was really thoughtful about the way she broke down what she can do for you, how she's figuring out whether she even fits with you. All of those things you should be able to see. Like the person that kind of goes, yep, if you can send me free product, I'll do it. Is probably the wrong person. Probably the not period. the right person. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. No, I really enjoy that. Yeah, that was really cool. It was really cool. There you go. Excellent. Okay, you got Excellent. my note for next week? Uh, yes, I did. I did, I did. Um, so I if you want to record Tuesday, we can. Yeah, we can. Let me, let me listen to that last episode. And if sure. there's nothing timely in it, we can use that one. Sure. And then, uh, we can if not, we can record Tuesday. It's not small a big break. Deal. Or we can record Tuesday, yeah. Yeah, whatever. I'll yeah. leave it to you. Cool. Let me know what you think. Okay. Okay, you got it. Okay, buddy boy. All right. Thanks, Thanks very much for this in the afternoon or yeah, no worries. time for you. No worries. Yeah. Must be screwing good. your system up. Your system doesn't understand no, it's podcast all good. day. Yeah, I know. It's all good. It's fine. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Take care, buddy. Thanks, buddy. We'll chat soon. Talk to you soon. Okay. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye. All right. That's the end of this Commerce Life. We'll be back soon with the next episode. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, give us feedback. Tell us what you think. Subscribe. Like us, join us, share us, tell your friends about us. And uh, we hope to see you next time with, uh, with more commerce news.